I'll tell you what. You are listening to the Bob Culture Podcast. I'll tell you what. This is the macho man, Randy Savage. And you are listening to my man, Rob. Don't you go away. Tear into the spice. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this episode of the Bob Culture Podcast. Right now you're listening to my good friends, Roulette, playing their track, Kingdom Here Come. Guys, thanks as always for letting me use your tune edge. And guys, check them out on iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. Uh, right now I'm so honored to be talking to New Jersey's own host of the award-winning and of course New Jersey's longest-running local rock music show, a Jersey Rock on 95.9 The Rat. This is a guy who's helped not only my former band, but so many of my friends over the years. Uh, the lord of the local music realm himself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Mr. Tom Hanley. Tom, what's up, bro? How are you? Wow, I'm overrated is what I am. Uh, no. <laughs> I'll it's uh, it's uh, awesome to be on your show, Rob. Uh, you know, it's, I've seen you on stage so many times, and uh, you're an amazing musician, and it's just cool to, uh, to be in this other side of your life. So uh, it's awesome to be on the Bob Culture Podcast. Thank you, bro. It's an honor. It's long overdue, man. Um, good to talk to you. And first and foremost, I got to thank you, man, for all you've done for us over the years, all you've done for my friends over the years, giving us this platform to kind of play at these great venues and kind of just be on the radio, which is super cool. But real quick, I wanted to ask you, how did you kind of get your start in this business? Um, yeah, that's, that's a good question. It's a, it's, it's a long, long story. Uh, in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, and, uh, nice. It might take at least uh, three trilogies to pull off. But, um, <laughs> you know, honestly, uh, I, uh, I, all my life I've done stuff uh, in the realm of uh, entertainment. Uh, when I was a kid, I was a child actor and model. Uh, oh, wow. They dated back going to New York City uh, several times a week back in the, the, the early to mid-1980s. Uh, and, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, I, I, I continued sort of with that sort of stuff. I always loved music. Uh, I kind of took a step back from that world to focus more on athletics and uh, education, obviously. And then, you know, one day, uh, I'm a freshman orientation leader at Monmouth University, and uh, uh, one of the other orientation leaders is going through my CD booklet. That's how long ago this was. It was a CD booklet. And he's <laughs> like, well, you got some you got some rad tunes in here, man. You should do a radio show. And I'm like, they're not going to let me do a radio show. He's like, you should try, and they let me do a radio show. So um, <laughs> I ended up doing... Uh, I did an 80s hair metal show on uh, WMCX at Monmouth University sure. uh, for four years. It was called The Night Train, the only place for 80s hair metal with an edge. On the church, be sure to get your request at 732-571-3493 or WMCX <laughs> request on the AOL Instant Messenger. Yes. Uh, so that's what, you know, yeah, that's what we took requests on. I remember uh, that. Yeah, awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that show ran from 2002 to 2006. During that time, uh, I was also the news director of WMCX, and I got to do a lot of stuff, everything from, like, interviewing the governor to uh, interviewing Mr. T. And, no way. And, um, you know, we, yeah, we did a lot. Of, he's the coolest guy ever, by the way. Um, but we did uh, a lot of stuff with that, and then, um, you know, I decided when I was at Monmouth, I also did a lot with the TV station that I wanted to do something in broadcast. And just, like, my whole life had been kind of leading up to that at that point, in a way, and I really got a lot of great skills. So, um, that being said, like, shameless plug to Monmouth University, they've got an amazing communication department, mm. and uh, the radio station there is just a, a true classroom, so it's a TV station. So, you know, I decided that I wanted to, to, to uh, do television or radio. So, you know, you graduate, you start putting out resumes. And uh, applied to a lot of places, and uh, Carl Kraft from ninety five nine the Rat got back to me, and he said, "You want to, uh, you want to take a shot at this?" And I did my interview, and I did my audition shift. And uh, the funny thing about that was, I didn't even know I was hired at the time. Uh, I thought I was auditioning, and I could fail and be told, "Okay, that's it, kid, you're done." <laughs> um, but they had a schedule up on the wall. I was already on the schedule, and I didn't know it was there because no one told me to look for it. And uh, about a week or two later, I get a phone call from Carl, and he says, hey, uh, do you still want to work here? And I'm like, yeah, of course, I really want to work here. He's like, well, you didn't show up for your shift. And I'm like, 
what what shift? He goes, oh crap! I didn't tell you about the schedule, did I? So uh, yeah, that makes anyway. <laughs> um, that makes it tricky. Uh, so, yeah. Well, man, props to him for not firing me for not showing up to my shift. Uh, he, yeah. By the way, he's an amazing boss, uh, awesome guy, and has given me so much freedom and support. Uh, more than anything, support with Jersey Rocky would not be possible uh, with, without him. Yeah, man. And that's how I got where I'm at. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's cr- crazy. I mean, so many good things. I mean, you're killing it right now on Jersey Rock, obviously. Um, and let's talk about, uh, real quick, WMCX. Uh, so many of my friends coming out of there. You're right, they have a great program. Uh, I've been there quite a few times. And uh, I may have been one of those people texting you on Instant Messenger, play uh, play Josie by Blink-182, play Newfound Glory. That was probably me. So I always called, man. <laughs> we uh, That was the coolest thing was that interaction uh, on AIM, which – it's not really the same on, uh, on like, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. But there was something about AOL was the messenger that was just, it was sleek and to the point. And, uh, you know, we, we, we did a lot of damage on that back in the 2000s. And, uh, you know, but it's funny because more people would, would reach out to us online than call the phone because it's easier. And, hmm. you know, sometimes people get nervous talking to someone. And, you know, it, and also somebody uh, might not answer the phone. Uh, actually, if you want to hear an interesting uh, AOL story. Yeah. Um, so, um... To this day, I, I haven't verified uh, the validity of this. I, I thought that when it happened, somebody was screwing with me. Okay. Uh, but then no one, ever, no one ever came forward to you uh, to to point out that they were the ones who did it and say, "I ah, joke on you." So you know, I, I was doing that uh, the, the, my show, The Night Train. It was a hair metal show, and I was doing it for at this point two years. And I'd actually amassed a, a following, like a legit following, to the point where uh, it was three hours of all '80s hair metal requests and we wouldn't be able to fit them all in. So uh, one day I'm starting my show and I kicked off the show uh, and I played a song from a live album of, 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 of a certain New Jersey band and I talked it up and said that I love this recording that was recorded live in Tokyo in 1985. Hmm. And uh, okay. two minutes later, uh, you know, I'm on the phone taking requests and I don't notice that the AOL messenger is blowing up. And uh, I look and there's a message and it says, Hey Tom, uh, I was told that you play a lot of my music, and I just heard what you said about my song. Uh, so I, I just want to say thank you, and I want to let you know that I'm going to be listening for uh, as long as I'm by a radio tonight. John. Hmm. And, hmm. uh... Okay. So I look at it, and the, the, the worst part about this is that I was so busy uh, on the phone with requests that um, I didn't get back to him immediately, to the point where there was another message that said, oh, are you there? Question mark. So um, I went back. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm there. Uh, and, you know, obviously John J O N John Bon Jovi. No and way, man! <laughs> That's awesome. I, now I I'd met him a year earlier, and uh, so at this point uh, I, I figured, well, let me see if this is this is, this is really him. Uh, so I said, I met you before, and uh, he asked where, and I I, I, I told him where, and. Uh, he said, you know, I only took a picture with one young dude there. Uh, I think he could picture you. And I said, yeah, I had, I had brown spiky hair. I was wearing a gray shirt. And then he immediately writes back, well, I had blonde frizzy hair, and I was wearing a striped shirt. And um, there's a photo that we took. And uh, that, that photo at the time wasn't on social media. The only place that could be seen was in my office at the X. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking, either it's exactly him, or this is somebody on the WMCX e-board <laughs> screwing with me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh no one ever came forward and we talked a little bit more he knew some details that day that people at WMCX didn't know so um, I, if that actually was him which to this day I still haven't verified uh, beyond cool uh, the screen name was something that uh, if you actually were him would probably be your screen name I'm not going to give it out because it might be something that he uses in uh, to a certain degree in other walks of life now right. whether it's on LinkedIn or Foursquare or whatever um, or TikTok I don't know but uh, you know <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to give it out but uh, you know it was it was uh, an interesting moment to be a you know 20 something year old kid uh, doing a radio show at a college station to have that come across you're like you know pretty nuts so um, that's my one of my favorite AIM stories but beyond that there were so many people uh, I can even remember some of their screen names now um Rock on, rock and roll. Uh, Punky Brewster something numbers. Uh, <laughs> Love my six cylinder. These these are names that would come across. Uh, the NJ Devil six six six. Terminator three three three. These are like people that would would, would constantly. Um, 
I am the show, Rainbow Bright, uh, with, with numbers behind it. And, you know, the, we called them the Night Trainiacs. Uh, nice. Which, you know, was obviously a play on Hulkamania. Um, I would end each show with, with Real American. And, nice! Uh, you know, so That's did, awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was, well, about, about uh, six months into the show, uh, it was like the 4th of July or something. I mean, whatever, it was the, my first 4th of July on the air. I would actually do the show through the summer. A lot of kids in school, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Uh, I lived close enough, I lived about a half an hour away, so I'd come in during the summer and do my show. So I did it four years straight without a break. Same time wow. slot, Saturday night, 59. Um, and um, 4th of July weekend, I'm on, and I, 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 I closed the show with Real American, and everyone's like, you got to close the show with the Jamel, and I got like 15 immediate IMs saying, you got to, so I made it my closer. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I always liked that song anyway. You know, it was one of those things that it vanished after Hogan left the World Wrestling Federation. Yeah, and man. I thank God for, for, uh, for, I don't know if it was Gazelle, LimeWire, or Winamax is how I got a hold of it. Uh, you know, nice. but, uh, you know, that was, that was, that was that back then. And, uh, you know, we, we, we had a good time with that show. And, uh, beyond that, it was, you know, WMCX's, uh, slogan back then was Modern Rock with an Edge. Sure. Yeah. So my, my, my show was 80s hair metal with an edge. And uh, my edge beyond just playing the hair metal was I played a lot of power metal bands like uh, Dragon Force and uh, other yeah. bands like that. And they actually came on the show a few times, which was pretty cool. So, no way. Anyway, that's, it, was, no, it, was, it was a pretty guitar hero. So they, they actually were willing to talk to. I mean, they were really cool. They were really, really cool and really open and really into it and, uh, you know, really supportive. So I can't say enough positive things about those guys. And, uh, but that was, again, that was. 2000, they were on the show back probably between 04 and 06. That's, that's so cool, man. And you know what? I bet that was uh, Bon Jovi for sure, man. Just the way you tell it. That's a pretty rad way to kind of get started there. And I remember Dragon Force being like the hardest level in uh, Guitar Hero for sure. That was like the hardest one. That- I had that song. I had that song uh, six months before it was uh, even released in Europe. Uh, they sent me the CD. No uh, way. Yeah, it's saying, not Final Master, but go ahead and play it. Uh, and I have I have the original version of that tune you know, on a compact disc from them. Dude, that's so cool, man. And we can't say enough great things about WMCX. A lot of fond memories of my heart, just bringing my drums in there, bringing a cajon, bringing an acoustic guitar with various bands over the years. Such a great place and a lot of great products and people coming out of there, uh, yourself included. I wanted to ask you, what's it like uh, or what does it mean to you following in the footsteps of of uh, my good friends, you know, who have had the helm of Jersey Rock, Maria Marr, uh, of course, Nikki Black. What was it like for you to kind of get that tap on the shoulder and the passing of the torch and, and kind of be, uh, you know, the captain of the ship that is Jersey Rock right now? Uh, both of those are Monmouth University alumni. Yep. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and the lineage is even longer than that because I'm like the seventh host of this show. Um, oh. You know, Steve Hook at one point hosted it. Jimmy Steele hosted it. Uh, and there were a number of other people, uh, some of which I haven't even met that have hosted it. Um, so first and foremost, uh, Maria Marr revolutionized Jersey Rock and she took it to a, a whole new level of what she did with it and really, really um, modernized it and did an amazing outreach and just really, uh, you know, the, the current of Jersey Rock, uh, you know, she built the foundation of it. And then, you know, when, uh, you know, she passed it on to Nikki, Nikki did such a phenomenal job of, of taking it to the next level and, and building that brand and keeping it going to the point where it literally was becoming uh, th- this element that had serious street cred. And, you know, to the point where people were looking at it as, you know, sometimes you think, oh, commercial radio isn't going to listen to me, they don't care. Well, I-, I think that between Nikki and Maria, they really uh, made that point that, you know, that, no, we do care, we want to hear from you. And that's not to say that the, the people that were doing it before then weren't doing it either, but uh, the current iteration of Jersey Rock... Uh, I, I, I think w- w- it was due to their efforts. So when I took that on, uh, my first objective was to, A, not lose any ground. That's the most important thing. Do no mm-hmm. harm. Uh, so, you know, my first year, it was just about making sure that I I, I put my own spin on it while, while not rattling the cages too much. You know, you don't want to, you know, turn an audience off. And in, in Jersey Rock's case, the audience isn't just the rat audience. It isn't just the person listening to the radio. The Jersey Rock audience uh, is the local music scene. And a lot of bands that are interested in getting their music on the air or are interested in hearing what other bands are doing and, and maybe learning from them. So, uh, you know, my objective was first to do no harm. And then beyond that, it's like, okay, uh, I've got this going. It's, it's time to see if I can build the brand uh, beyond. You, get, you, know, you want to take it to the next level at that point. So, you know, we, we started doing uh, 
the Jersey Rock podcast and uh, some other elements. We got to do a mixtape with, with our friends over in the cloud. That was beyond cool. And, you know, uh, you know, expanding the scope of the Jersey Rock showcase series. So all of that, you know, it, 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 it's every, everything in this world, I believe, is a generational story. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's a music show on a commercial radio station, uh, whether it's, you know, an industry or a sports team or, or whatever, you stand on the shoulders of the generation that came before you. And then beyond that, it's your job to prop up the generation that comes after you. So at the lat, we've been able to do that. And I feel very fortunate to be a part of that. Oh, dude. And you're doing a great job. Absolutely. Uh, and again, thank you on behalf of, you know, myself and all my friends that you've helped out. Now let's get a little shameless promo out of the way. Uh, let's talk about the Jersey Rock Showcase coming up. Uh, you have things at Jamian's Wonder Bar. Tell us a little bit about that and some of my favorite bands, uh, Roulette, who we heard a little earlier, uh, Pepperwine, my good friend Kelly in that band, uh, Reality Suite. Tell us about some of these bands you chose and some of these venues. Uh, I'll say it first off, thank you for your words of praise, you know, um, but this is a two-way street, and, you know, Jersey Rock doesn't exist without all the amazing talent that's out there, and I've been fortunate uh, to meet a number of great bands, and there's so many out there that I haven't met yet, and I haven't worked with yet that I look forward to working with, but uh, on this bill, we've got an, uh, an insane cross-section of about 21 uh, different bands and artists, and, you know, I wish I had more room, because there's so many great acts, but... Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll go through it right now. It's, uh, we're doing five free shows Thursdays, starting the Thursday after President's Day. So the first day is 2 20, 2020. Uh, the doors are at 7. It's free admission. It is 21 and up because it's going to be an adult atmosphere, specifically because uh, we're going to be drinking a lot of Yingling those nights. Uh, our good friends at Yingling Shore Point Distributing, uh, they're the ones who are sponsoring this, and we're going to have Yingling specials like crazy at all of these different venues. Uh, Three dollar drafts and uh, the golden pilsner and uh, bottles and all that fun stuff. So um, that being said, I'll go through uh, every show right now. Uh, the first one we were, we did a show at this venue last year and they were phenomenal. And I said we had to get back to this place. Jamians in Redbank, awesome location for local music. That's our first show. That Thursday, February twentieth, and uh, the bands on that bill, uh, Vendetta Rose. They're uh, they're they're an awesome young and up and coming act. Uh, they they recently rocked the Asbury Lanes. They're going to rock the Asbury Lanes again on March 7th. Uh, Nick Ryan and the Mess. Uh, these guys, I mean, I think everyone on the scene at least knows one member of this band because I, I equate them to being kind of like the Expendables uh, in, in a way because um, there's just so many different like high-octane guys on the stage, um, whether it's you know Nick Ryan leading the band or Jimmy Franklin on guitar Jimmy. or Michael Swillis on sax. Uh, they're nuts. Then you have Brian, uh, Brian Erickson's latest project, The Extensions. I'm stoked to have them on. Uh, Brian's a great dude. We did a lot with him in the Paper Jets back in the day. He actually, um, I met Brian at uh, Jersey Rock, Rock at the Pier show, uh, Lickter Village, and it was my first year doing that. And, you know, when you transfer stuff over, you know, uh, Nikki Black actually set up that entire series. Uh, that year, but I had to uh, I had to take it over and do it. So, um, long story short, I didn't know all the artists that I was working with uh, at Pier Village that year, back in 2016. Right. And uh, one of the artists, I, I couldn't find her contact info, and I was emailing the email address. Long story short, never touched base, uh, and she didn't show up. Uh, to no fault of her own, we just we couldn't communicate. Whatever happened, you know, something got lost in translation there. Um, yeah. And. Uh, so I'm there, and I'm like, I'm talking to, like, Maddie Carlock, and he's like, oh, she'll show up, she'll show up. And I'm like, I hope so. And then the person didn't show up, and then Brian Erickson happens to be there, and he goes, hey, uh, I'm in a band, I, I, I can play. I think he was, he was friends with one of the guys that was playing. And I'm like, I'm like, do you have a guitar? And he goes, yeah, my car. I said, get it. And he yeah. came up and did an amazing set you know, off the cuff, just got up on stage and killed it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm immediately that's when our relationship started. So Brian Erickson, an amazing guy, his band The Extension, they're going to rock the show. Sunsets from Jupiter, they're, uh, they're a young band from Middletown. Uh, I think they just graduated from high school, and we just featured them as the Jersey Rock Band of the Week uh, about a week or two ago, and they rock. So that's, that's Jamians on February 20th. Nice. Now, uh, the, the next show, uh, the week after that, February 27th, we're going to be at the Asbury Fest Hall and Beer Garden, which, um, the first time I walked into that place back in 2015, I was like, this place is amazing. Yeah. Uh, just a you know, really cool place, uh, great beer, great food. Those pretzels are nuts. Uh, and, <laughs> you can't ask for more accommodating staff. I mean, everyone from the bartenders to the managers to the, the bouncers who are all professional wrestler great, but are the friendliest guys you'll ever meet. 
Um, so that's going to be an awesome show. And they just started serving Yingling, which is what, you know, allows us to get them in this series, which is really cool. They also have a bunch of other amazing beers as well, but we're going to focus on Yingling because they're the ones who are making this possible. That's right. Uh, uh, an awesome, <laughs> we have an awesome bill for that. It's going to be um, a semi-acoustic show that night. I think uh, Lou Panico, um said it's going to be uh, controlled electric was the term he used because we don't want to blow the place off. So it's going to start off uh, with two acoustic sets. The first one, uh, Brian Wood, uh, also goes by the, the, the name B. Wood, makes music on social media. You might remember him. He was the front man of Wicked Hollow. Okay. And now he's doing his own solo thing. And, and, and Brian's, Brian's an amazing artist. But he's going to get off the show. And then Lou Panico. And Lou, I mean, I think everyone... On um, the Jersey Rock scene, knows Lou from his work with Levy and the Oaks, um, amazing band. His new group, the Abbey Road All Stars, uh, mm-hmm. they're a killer Beatles tribute. Levy and the Oaks is still in action as well, but that's, you know, Lou's all over the place. So Lou's, uh, Lou's taking it over there. He's doing an acoustic set. Then Low Light's gonna come up, uh, and they're gonna, they're gonna rock the house. And uh, then Natalie Farrell is gonna close out the evening. So, you know, that's, that's gonna be a killer bill, and I'm stoked about that. Uh, then Wonder Bar uh, on, on March 5th. Uh, again, I, I'm, everyone, I'm beyond pleased with every one of my venues um, this year. The ones that I have this year and even the ones that I don't have this year, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of great venues. And Wonder Bar is was one of the best places around as far as supporting local music, um, what they do with their Happy Mondays and stuff. They're, yeah. they're awesome. So we've got, a, we've got an insane bill for, uh, for Wonder Bar. It's a big bill. Uh, the, uh, the first band that's going to be on is uh, a band called Kodiak. And they are, um, they, they have an amazing, um, almost retro 80s, but modern at the same time sound. Um, I don't want to compare them to Greta Van Fleet, but they do have a similar vibe, but in more of an 80s Van Halen kind of uh, sense. Cool. And uh, they're actually managed by uh, legendary drummer Carmine Apiece. I know Carmine, um, yeah, he taught my drum yeah, teacher, man, yeah, <laughs> no way. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Carmine's awesome, and he uh, he took these guys under their wing and uh, under his wing, and they're they're just phenomenal. Uh, so they're going to get off the show. We're stoked about that. Uh, oh, then the Crypt Keeper Five uh, is is going to be on after them, and uh, those guys, uh, you know, they they've been around for a long time. They're just an amazing punk band, and I, I love them. And so they're on next. Then uh, after them, the Scullers, um, and uh, you know Jack Sculler, uh who leads the band. I can't say enough positive things about Jack. And that band, you know, Jack's been, like, uh, in the music industry since he was a kid. He was, he, uh, the Radio Disney selected him to, like, tour the nation, uh, like, five or six years ago. So he was on this national tour. And the Scholars is this amazing, bluesy, uh, hard rock band, and they're just phenomenal. Uh, then Morningside Lane. And, um, you know, they, I, uh, they, they were on the showcase last year, and they killed it. And uh, it's interesting, because uh, we were doing our uh, broadcast with people of New Jersey, uh, we do that every year uh, over at the shop right in Neptune uh, to, to collect food for people on the Thanksgiving season right here in our backyard. And this year, Diamante stopped by. Um, ah. And she's, uh, you know, because she was playing the Wonder Bar that night. And um, so she was there, and she asked me, she said, hey, uh, I don't know if you're the local music guy, right? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, they're this band, uh, they're opening for you. Are they any good? They're called Morningside Lane. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, they're really good. So, uh, <laughs> They, 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 uh, they, the fact, I was, I was, I was really uh, pleased that those guys were, were already getting opening spots for that because they, they, they rock. And then Roulette, you know them well. Oh, yeah. uh, Roulette, uh, I, I, I can't say enough great things about Roulette. They're an awesome uh, metal band, and they've also got kind of a punk rock edge to them. Uh, you know, there's great vocals, insane technical prowess from the instrumental perspective. Yes. And uh, they're one of the first bands that I ever featured as host of Jury Direct. They were actually the second or third band. Uh, they were the third. They were the third band, and I, I found their CD. Uh, they had mailed it in, and I, I just popped it in my car CD player, and I was like, "These guys are great." So I had to reach out to them, and they were my. Uh, they were the third band I ever featured on Jersey Rock. So you know, we're stoked to have them on uh, on on this showcase again. They uh, they've killed it every time they've been there. So that's uh, that's the Wonder Bar on 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 March fifth. Uh, then March twelfth, this will be our first time ever rocking Joe's Surf Shack over in Lake Como. Yes, and uh, we've got a really cool bill for this show. Um, uh, we got Rockstar Race Car. These guys are a really young band, but um, they play all over the place. They do they do a lot of shows. They're very, uh, very, very active. And uh, I featured them. Uh, I think last year we've had them on the podcast since then. And, you know, I was like, you know, like, I wanted to. Well, part of the showcase series is getting bands that are well established on the bill. Bands like you know, like Roulette with the Crypt Keeper Five. 
you know, like, like Low Life. Those are bands that are, you know, very established, but also giving bands that, that maybe aren't as well-known uh, a shot. And these guys, uh, they're well-known where they, where they play up north, but, you know, I thought it would be cool to have them on the bill here. Lost Romance, uh, they're a band that I recently had in the podcast, and they got a, a really cool, uh, you know, kind of classic rock meets punk rock sound, and I'm like, I'm going to have these guys on as well. And then we got two Jersey Rock vets holding down this bill. Pepperwine. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, Pepperwine's amazing, and they got this this cool, chill, jazzy sound, and uh, Kelly Shane just owns it up there. So, uh, you know, I had to ask them to come back. They've done a couple of shows with us in the past. And then Cold Weather Company, uh, who I realized I hadn't done a show with Cold Weather Company in, like, you know, at least two years. So I'm like, I had to hit them up. I'm like, you know, we have to, we have to do something. It's been way too long. They're like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So uh, stoked at Cold Weather Company. Uh, they just, by the way, uh, they, they put out a new album last year, which they crowdsourced. It's really cool. Um, and they, and they just put out an incredible new single. They covered the Penguin's Earth Angel, which mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think a lot of people would know from Back in the Future. Uh, it, yes. you know, they, they, did an, they did an amazing job with that. So actually, the, I think the video is up on the Jersey Rock page, WRAT.com. Wait, no, the video is not. We have on the podcast. Recently. We're going to feature that video real soon, though. Uh, and then the final show uh, of, of the showcase, uh, we're closing things out over at the Ripple Rock in Brick. On Thursday, March nineteenth, Painted Young. Uh, they they reached out to me. They actually they emailed me this about uh, uh, two months ago, and they said, "Hey, um, we know you do this Jersey Rock showcase thing. We're really interested in uh, in being a part of that. Uh, Could we be on it?" And I, you know, I, I looked them up, and I saw that they they've done a lot of stuff. They most recently opened for the ones you forgot uh, over uh, in, in Asbury Park, by House of Independence. They've been in action. I started listening to their music, and I'm like. I like their sound. They got a really cool pop punk sound. So you know, we featured them on the podcast, uh, and we did some stuff with them. And I said, "Hey, you want to you want to come on this?" And they were very receptive. They said, "Yeah, let's do it." Uh, and then then a bird, uh, Adam Bird, uh, is uh, is uh, going to be on after them, and he's just he's he's been around for forever, and uh, he's been recently doing his solo thing. Uh, I love the sound. Uh, he was very supportive of the last year's showcase. He came down. He was at our first show. Uh, over at Jamie's last year, and I uh, spent for the whole time, and you know, an awesome guy, and uh, I, I loved what he's been doing lately as a solo artist. So I had to have him on the bill. Reality Suite, um, they are they they are an arena rock group. They've got uh, a technical prowess as far as musicality goes. They're 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 phenomenal, and uh, you know, uh, Kenny Lynn, uh, Kenny Hart, uh, the uh, their lead singer, uh, is incredibly charismatic, and they just. Uh, they rock hard. They recently got signed to a label over in Europe. Uh, oh, wow. I think in, I think, I don't know, Holland or, or what country over there, but it's Lions Pride Music, and uh, they're getting a lot of spins over in Europe. They love them over there. There's a great metal scene over there. And, uh, you know, we, we had them on the bill last year, and they were phenomenal. They're on our Jersey Rock mixtape. Uh, I love them. It's, they, they came back. And then Windward, it's kind of become like a tradition for Windward to close out the Jersey Rock Showcase series. Uh, Brick's their hometown. River Rock is their home turf. They always, always, always bring it. Uh, they're just an amazing alternative rock band uh, with also kind of a metal edge. You know, they're 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 a little they're a little Pearl Jam, and they're also like a little Kung Fury, uh, if you know what I mean with cool. that. Yeah. Um, they 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 have an alter ego called Laser Scorpion. Uh, so <laughs> if you look them up, they they they're just a really really cool, really solid band, and uh, they they closed out. I think three or four of these, and I, it's just kind of, it's, it's like a tradition. I just have, hey guys, you want to close the showcase? And uh, they're always very receptive. Uh, they have a really cool music video that they shot uh, over um, at Camp Evans called uh, Fake Memories. So you have a chance to check it out. It's really, really cool. But that, that's, that's our showcase series. I know that was uh, a lot of process, but there's Thursday, Thursday nights uh, in, between February 20th and March 19th. Free shows, ages 21 and up. Killer Yingling specials brought to us by our friends over at Yingling Shorepoint Distributing and all of the, the killer bands that make it Jersey Rock. And I am grateful to all of them for being a part of this. I love it, Tom. And also what I love besides a stellar all-star lineup, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, a lot of friends of mine, Brian Morelli, Jimmy Franklin, Kelly Shane, we mentioned, a lot of these great bands, a lot of bands I haven't seen yet. I got to check out that Earth Angel cover. That sounds awesome, man. Um, uh, Back to the Future, one of the best for sure. Um, But I love that you know the band members, you know the tracks, you know the history with these bands. Uh, You had something to say about each and every band. And that's why you're the guy right now. You know, that's why you're the guy on the rat. Uh, That means a lot 
lot to me. That means a lot to these bands that I'm going to tag later. And basically say, hey, if you want a compliment from uh, Tom Hanley, he did it on the podcast. So there you go. Here's it's, the, it's here, easy here. to compliment every one of them. Uh, and it's easy to compliment you, <laughs> by the way, as a musician. The things you did with your band, Vection, uh, yeah. I can't say enough positive things about that group as well. We did a lot of shows with you. So you know, I, I'm privileged because the, you know, the local scene is very, uh, it, it's, just, it's just brimming with talent. New Jersey is an amazing place. Um, whether you're talking about the New Brunswick scene, uh, whether you're talking about Asbury Park, uh, you know, whether you're talking about Trenton, uh, you know, or, you know, or, you know, even, even, even the places that, are, that, that maybe some, I uh, think, are lesser known. Red Bank's got an amazing scene. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's so many, there's so many great places in New Jersey. We're very fortunate. I, I do think that Asbury Park is, uh, you know, is without a doubt one of the best music places in the entire country. Yeah, uh, and you know we're, I'm, I'm fortunate. There's, there's, there's. There, I have a lot of great things, a lot of great bands to work with here, and people like you and people like everyone that I mentioned uh, make my job a lot easier. Dude, amen. It, it goes both ways, man. And thank you so much again for everything. And uh, here's the million dollar question. And I'll give you kind of a two parter on this one. Do you play an instrument? That's kind of the million dollar question. Besides, why is your hair so great? That's really the million dollar question. But, um, <laughs> and then also, you mentioned uh, ath- athletics and other things uh, besides the music realm. What are some other things that you're into? So, first, do you play anything? And then, what are some other things you're into outside of music? I play nothing. When I was a kid, um, I did fool around uh, with electric guitar back in, uh, geez, um, I had my first guitar lesson in, uh, I want to say January of 1988, and it was really cool because I went to a place called Notable Music in Middletown, and a lot of the guys that were teaching it were like guys who were walking straight out of like what MTV would look like, but um, you know, I I never really stuck with it because honestly, in order to master anything, you have to put you all into it and at that point in my life I was doing so many other things um, you know I, I just never really you know never really got any traction with that so I fooled around with it for a couple of years it was fun I actually threw up my, uh, my guitar uh, from them but I don't play it I, I suck um, so you know that that means that you know I, 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 don't, I don't the only thing that I play are uh, the bands who make New Jersey well on my show on the rat um, I don't <laughs> play any instrument um, okay. uh, as far as, as uh, as far as the hair goes, I had to, um, <laughs> I, tra- I, I, tra- I trained in a uh, hundred times gravity, um, on the way to planet Namek and, yeah. uh, it still wasn't getting, uh, my, 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 my best friend was killed by a space lizard and that's what, what, what took it off. Um, okay. so, okay. um, <laughs> God, if anyone gets that reference, I hope people get the reference. I don't think I'm just a lunatic. Dragon Ball Z people. So, um, go. anyway, uh, no, it's, it's just a lot of, a lot of, um, bleach and hairspray and hair dryers and I get angry emails from Al Gore regularly about what I've been doing to the ozone there. Wow. <laughs> so um, that's that's that. Um, and and uh, you know it's uh, um, as far as other things that I'm involved in, um, you know, um, it, it, I actually played football in high school. So I'm the uh, so as of as of 1999, I'm the only person to ever letter in both football and uh, drama at Middletown High School North. No way. No way. That's awesome. Yeah, my coach actually made that distinction when he, when he awarded my varsity letter. Um, you know, and uh, that, you know, that, that, that consumed a large part of my uh, my high school years. Uh, you know, football is one of those things where you just, you know, you, it, it becomes your life. Uh, yeah. And you have to work really hard at it and get stronger and, and do that. And I, to, to this day, I still carry a lot of the lessons I learned because football was the first thing that taught me you know, things aren't always going to go your way. Uh, you know, it taught me, you know, if you want to take steal a quote from Sylvester Stallone, you know, it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Hmm. Well, I learned a lot of that, a lot of that, um, doing that. It's a great quote. My coach, a great quote. He's a great, he's an inspiration. Look, any dude that managed to, uh, to pull off what he pulled off um, is legit. The fact that he lived in the Port Authority men's room for three days in the 1970s, uh, it shows you how much of a badass he is, by the way. Wow. But, um, you, know, you know, that's, uh, look, look him up. He's the special someone the real deal. But, wow. um, you know, I, uh, my, my coach, Mike Galos, he, uh, had a lot of inspirational things to say. And one of them was that, you know, adversity, you have to face adversity. And tough times don't last, tough men do. And, you know, you keep moving forward. And, you know, I, I learned a lot, uh, from him. And, you know, interesting note on him. Uh, we, uh, recently did an alumni game. Uh, in uh, 2015, and um, and I got I got to play with a lot of uh, 
a lot of members of, 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 of my high school's past, people that were state champions in the 80s, uh, uh, guys from our 96 state championship team. I was a freshman for that. I stood on the sidelines at Giant Stadium. I did absolutely nothing. But, uh, you know, uh, they, they, these guys were legends. Uh, at my high school, and we, you know, we got together and we practiced in the, in the hot summer. And he came back and coached us. And um, you know, um, I, I actually um, pulled out of the game because I had to. Um, uh, my, my dad was having surgery in the city the, uh, the, the two days later, and I'm like, you know what? I have to take him in. I can't risk breaking my leg, so I actually didn't play. But um, they ended up winning that game, uh, which was really cool. And if, if you watched his speech in the locker room, it like gave me chills because it was like. The man had never missed a beat, and, you know, some coaches, they like to shout and scream, and he's just calm and collected, like the football coach equivalent of Optimus Prime. Nice. So, um, <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's honestly what he what he is and what, you know, he was as a coach to us. So that, you know, I did that, and, I, you know, I've actually um, also, hobby-wise, or it become, actually becomes a part of your life, I've been... Uh, uh, I've been training in the martial arts since uh, I was seven years old. Nice. Uh, karate and what? Uh, and sword and stuff, and that that's also a, a been, been a huge uh, part of my life for, uh, for for a very long time. And you know, all these are all elements that you know the, like, reasons I didn't play guitar, I guess. Um, you know, um, so that's that, that, that that's some elements uh, of my life there to, uh, to to give you the heads up. That that's legit, man. It sounds like you got like a lot of discipline. You got a lot of athletics, and it sounds like you have a lot of good people in your life, man. That's that's pretty inspiring, man. I like that. Um, and, and speaking about being inspiring, man, you know, for someone like me, like I am, you know, doing the podcast thing. It's it's going great. I've met a lot of great people. Worked with a lot of great, um, you know, bands like you have, and uh, have some name drops here and there with some celebrities, which is always cool. And uh, but first and foremost, I'm a drummer. You know, this is still all very new to me, and uh, it's grown into something. So, what advice, first of all, would you have for someone like me that is getting into more of the broadcasting stuff? Uh, you know, first and foremost, the drum set is my office. That's where I'm most comfortable. And then, secondly, what advice would you have for these local bands that you work with that are trying to get to that next level? Well, first and foremost, let's talk about drums. I'm not a musician, but even I can see that it is easily the most physically demanding element of any band. And sometimes I think drummers don't get enough credit um, for what they do. And you are a killer drummer, sir. Thank you. And you know, uh, you know, it's 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 hard. It's, when you look at the guys on stage in some bands, and everyone, you know, you got guys that are dressed up in their kit gear, and you see the drummer dressed up like he's going to workout world. Well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> and um, you know, I, I don't know if you know this drummer, um, Yoshiki or Yoshiki, the drummer for X Japan. Um, does that, have, you, have you ever heard of them? No, I don't, but go ahead. I'm interested. Go ahead. Well, you got to look up these guys. First of all, they're the greatest band that you've never heard of because <laughs> um, they are um, they're a visual key band. Visual key is a movement in Japan uh, in the late 80s and into the 90s that blended a lot of elements of, you know, of glam rock, of punk, of metal. Um, and, you know, part of it was you had to sound good, but you also had to look good. So if you, um, we'll do another Dragon Ball Z reference. If, um, if, if Motley Crue was, you know, looks wise, was Super Saiyan, uh, these guys were Super Saiyan 3. Nice. Um, <laughs> because they, their hair was that big. And I'm not sure it was real, if it was a wig or whatever. Look it up, it's nuts. If that was real hair, I don't know how they stuff tonight. But, um, <laughs> they're, they're a killer band. And I found them. Uh, through my friend. Again, the early 2000s was this cool time where you could find any kind of music through file sharing. And, you know, uh, you know, the, nowadays that's, you know, kind of a thing of the past. It's more of a black market thing. And, you know, as someone who supports music, I can't condone file sharing. But, right. you know, I did ask Herman Lee of Dragon Force uh, in an interview one time. I, I'm like, I said, Herman, you sold out every show on this North American tour and you're not getting any airplay in America. Your, your music isn't for sale in America. How is it that you're able to do this? And I already knew the answer, but he said, oh, it's because people are downloading our music illegally online. And I'm like, well, what are your feelings on that? And he said, I think it's great, because we would never huh? be able to start a show here in America without this. And, you know, he, that, was, wow. that was his argument, which he felt it gave him and Dragon Force the opportunity to be seen. They were, they were rocking the uh, Nokia Theater in New York City, which I think it's called, the, it was, then it became the Best Buy Theater, now it's the PlayStation Theater. It's mm -hmm. middle of Times Square, I thought from where Toys R Us used to be. Yep. So, uh, you know, he, you know he, they were playing that. It was a sold-out show, and there were people like outside who wanted to get in. 
and now that's not the biggest venue, but to, to sell that out immediately, and, and it's all at every venue uh, on their tour, and they were playing uh, everywhere between uh, New York City and California, and I think they even were a couple Canadian dates. Um, so, you know, my point is, getting back to file sharing, my friend, uh, after, um, he, was, he, was, he was looking for, um, he was angry about something, and he, he, he typed in, I'll kill you, into, uh, into the Winamax search, and then he found this song called I'll Kill You by X-Japan. And he loved it, and then he started downloading all their music, and then he just gave me a mix CD with 20 tracks, and I was blown away by them. Uh, they're just an incredible band. If you look them up, look up their tracks, Rusty Nail, uh, Endless Rain, Weekend, Car and I, these are all amazing tunes, and uh, there's even there's even more behind that. Art of Life is a half an hour long epic song, so look that up as well. So <laughs> nice. getting, back, getting back to drumming, Yoshiki, um is this guy, and he's, he's the leader of the band, but he's the drummer. And he's a classically trained musician. He's a pianist. Uh, he's, he's a composer. He composes classical music for the Japanese government. Um, and he's also the, um, the most amazing drummer I've ever seen. He did. We saw them at the Garden in 2014. Uh, at a show that was broadcast around the world in movie theaters in Asia uh, and other parts of, of the world. And this dude put on a drum solo, the likes of which... Uh, it, it was incomprehensible what he was doing. So um, look him up. And if you find video of this on uh, on YouTube uh, of them playing in 2014 at Madison Square Garden, do it. So my, nice. my, my point is with drummers, he's my favorite drummer, uh, though Though that being said, Neil Peart is far and away, mm. I think, the greatest drummer of all time. All right, Neil Pete. Peart, you know. Yeah. Which, you know, it's, it's interesting because I had to make sure that I was pronouncing his name wrong because growing up, I always called him Neil Peart. Yeah, me and, too. Yeah, you know, every, everyone did. Everyone did. And you know, I'm at I'm at a rush show. My buddy uh, Jason dragged me to a rush show. It's not that I didn't want to go. It's just that I was so busy that I didn't think I could go. He's like, "You're going." I said, "All right." I'm so glad that I did because there was another opportunity to see him. And it, um, unbelievable. So out of the show, I'm like, "Neil," uh, I looked at him all during the drums. So I was like, "Neil Pert is amazing." And he said a couple of exploded deletes and said his name is Pert. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that's why, you know, I was I was on on, on the air on the rap the day after the news broke, and I oh. I, I got on. And I, I, I I I you know I knew what he said, but I actually went out of my way to just just to verify. So I've had an Eddie Trunk interview with Neil because he did he didn't do many interviews. And yeah. uh, the first question Eddie Trunk asked was, "How do I pronounce your name?" And I was like, "Okay, it's Pierce." But Neil Pierce, you know, the Eddie he's the king of drummers. But um, Yoshiki or Yoshiki, how, how we Americans might pronounce it. Look him up on X Japan, they rock hard. So, um, anyway, that was a long tangent and it had absolutely nothing to do uh, with your question. No, no worries, man. <laughs> so, but it is, it is plenty of filler content. So yeah, <laughs> no. Sure. Yes. Uh, but yeah, being it right. And, dude, that's awesome. I'm definitely checking out that drum solo, first of all. But I guess, yeah, first, first firstly, for me, yeah, you know, as far as the podcasting thing, I'm, first and foremost, I'm a drummer. What advice would you have for someone doing like a podcast or something like that? That's so tough, um, because, you know, podcasting is this amazing thing where you can literally do whatever you want, carve out an audience, and you can go on to the wild west of the internet and, you know, try to stake your claim. But the, the problem these days with the internet is that there are so many people out there, whether you're a YouTuber, uh, whether you're a podcaster, whether you're in a band. I was, I was talking with uh, Sam Bay of uh, the Parlor Mob a couple of weeks ago, and he said, you know, it's so hard to mm -hmm. get noticed now online. He said, you know, you and I could write the most amazing song ever and put it out and no one might ever hear it. And, you know, I think that's true for podcasting uh, as well. So yeah. it's challenging. All I can say uh, with podcasting is try to be unique, find your audience, and, and, and play to your audience because they're at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to carry you through. Uh, Jersey Rock's audience, uh, it, it, it's foundation, in my opinion, uh, you know, is the local music scene. When I say local music scene, I'm talking about the band. Yeah. I'm talking about people that like local music. I'm talking about people that run venues. Uh, those kind of people. That's not to say the rap rock nation isn't a part of that. But if I'm a guy tuning into 95.9 The Rat, I'm tuning into The Rat because I want to hear Led Zeppelin. I want to hear Guns N' Roses, Pearl Jam, Nirvana. Those are the bands that I'm tuning into here. I not, might not, if I'm just a casual radio listener, I might not care to hear a track from Vection, no matter how cool that may be, no matter how, how kick-ass that track may be, I'm a casual listener, I might not care about that, so, but if I'm a guy in the local scene, on the, on the other flip side of that, I want to hear what these guys are doing to get, the, 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 why they're good enough to be on the radio, I want to hear what they did to make them on the radio, 
I want, if I'm booking talent, I want to hear how good these guys are if I can maybe book them on the bill for one of my shows. So to me, my audience is the local music scene, people that are involved in it. Not to say that I don't care about the Rat Rock Nation. I love these people. They're amazing. When they, uh, my interaction with these people, well, you're not going to find a more loyal listenership in, in terrestrial radio than the people that listen to 95 Now the Rat uh, daily at all hours of the day. But, you know, that being said, I know that my core is the local music scene. So I don't want to stray from that. So whether you're doing a podcast and your podcast is about wrestling or your podcast uh, is about anime or your podcast is about personal hygiene, you know, you <laughs> want to play to that audience and those people because they're the ones at the end of the day that are going to carry you when no one else will. And then from there, you want to build out and you can build out beyond that and find the more casual person who might not off the bat have been, been with you. But you can't do it without that bedrock. So my, my, my advice to anyone who wants to do a podcast, who wants to do anything, is first, think about who your target demographic is. So like for, for the rat, for example, our target demographic is, it's not up in the studio anymore. For the longest time, there was a piece of paper that said, you are talking to a 25 to 55-year-old male with a sense of humor. Uh, that's our core. Uh, does that mean that we don't care about people younger than that? or older than that, or women? Hell no! We love all of those people. We just know that the way that we play, the music we play, and more more importantly, our, our delivery method and our sense of humor and our party-first kind of attitude appeals most to that demographic. That's not to say that we don't have a ridiculous amount of women listeners uh, in the Rat Rock Nation. We Honestly, we probably have just about as many women that, 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 that tune in because... And you, you can't assume that just because it's something that's catered towards a man that a woman won't like it, and just because it's something that's catered towards a woman that a man won't like it. Um, and that, you know, I, I, I do get nine-year-olds to call me up, uh, you know, yeah. and I do get 70-year-olds to call me up. So yeah. my point is that we hit, we hit a very wide spread of listeners in the Rat Rock Nation, but we have a target demographic, and we need that target demographic because that's the foundation. You can't build the Empire State Building without that incredible bedrock that is below it. So, you know, that's what we need. And look at that as your ground floor, as your basement, as your foundation of those people that, that, that are going to be your core. And you can't stray from your core because if you do that, sooner or later the building's going to come down. So that's my biggest advice to anyone is, you know, figure out who your audience is and play to them. But on the flip side of that, do not be mutually exclusive. Um, you know, you need to be all inclusive. You need to always be strong in new people. You need to be open to new ideas. You, you need to, to, to be the person that everyone wants wants to follow. You need to be that that, that person who you know that 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 that, that is welcoming and friendly. You know, I, I was at I was at a bar tonight where a guy was doing trivia, and this dude was uh, was was working the floor so incredibly well, and he clearly had some regulars there that knew him well, but he also had a lot of people that didn't know who the heck he was or what he was doing, and he won every one of them over, so you have to do that, and uh, that, to me, that's the most important thing for anyone who's trying to get out there, because the world is so competitive, mm. uh, and especially now, now that everyone's got a mic, everyone's got a home studio, uh, you need to, you, you need that foundation, and then set yourself apart, you need to have an edge, you need to have something that's more, because you know, there, I'm sure there are a ton of wrestling podcasts out there. You have to have something that draws people to you, whether it be your personality, uh, that's really important, uh, your delivery method, something that you do that no one else does. You do need to be unique uh, to a certain degree. You have to have a certain X factor there. So, you know, it, it's a lot to process, but anyone who's really serious needs to take all that into consideration, sit down with a notebook and a PowerPoint presentation or whatever, and figure out your strategy because, you know, all, all fights are won, you know, in many ways, all wars and battles are won uh, before the first shot is fired, before the first punch is thrown, before the first song is launched. You need to figure out what you're going to do and then adapt from there. So um, wow. it's a lot. Uh, it's tough. It's not impossible. Nothing is impossible. Wow, man. Really, really good. And I think that goes, uh, you know, for a lot of the band stuff as, as well, man. Really, I mean, I, I took a lot from that. Very well said. Um, Tom, I want to be super, super respectful of your time, man. And, and thank you so much. This has been a great podcast. We got to do it again. Uh, next time we'll do it in person, man. It's always a pleasure crossing paths with you. And, uh, you know, just uh, thank you again for everything you've done for us and all my friends. Uh, real quick, where can everyone f follow you on social media and tune into Jersey Rock? 
Uh, of course, Jersey Rock, uh, Rock's Rat Radio, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 11.30. Uh, that's the on-air show. Um, so, uh, tonight, actually, well, uh, actually, no, this isn't going to air tonight. This is, this is, uh, this can tell you to listen to this, to this, this podcast in the year 2025. So, forget, yeah. forget me, Pimp the Night Show. But, um, <laughs> you know, that, that, that being said, we're Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 11.30 p.m. Uh, that's the on-air show. We have the Jersey Rock Weekly Podcast. That goes live at WRAC.com every Sunday at 6 p.m. And it stays there uh, for as long as we're going to host podcasts. So if you missed an episode, you can always go back. Uh, you can actually have an email to you by subscribing to the Jersey Rock e-newsletter through Club Rec at WRAC.com. Uh, every Monday morning, you'll get all of the Jersey Rock features, uh, including the podcast. And you'll know what's going on, like with our Jersey Rock Showcase series. And uh, Club Rack's free to join. And the cool thing about that is you'll also, uh, you know, when you join Club Rat, you automatically get the Club Rat newsletter, which gives you, like, the heads up on if we're doing a ticket giveaway, like if Guns N' Roses is playing that live stadium and we have tickets or, you know, something like that, you'll know before anyone else. So um, you need the option for the, for the Jersey Rock e-newsletter. Um, so that's, that's where you can listen to Jersey Rock. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, all you have to do is, 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 is search Jersey Rock. It's, I think the handle is at Jersey Rock 95.9. Uh, on Instagram, I believe it's Jersey underscore Rock, and we're on Twitter as Jersey Rock. Uh, all those links, though, um, you know, if you just go to WRAT.com and go on the Jersey Rock page, there's links to every one of those things. There's also all the Jersey Rock features, the podcast, uh, everything uh, is up there. If you go to WRAT.com, just click Music, and uh, the little open up, like, little drop-down tab will come down. It's the third thing, click Jersey Rock, they'll take you to the Jersey Rock page. Uh, that being said, if you're going to New Jersey, back. And by the way, if like you're in, uh, if, if, if half of your members are from Brooklyn or Pennsylvania, I'm cool with that. If you're from New Jersey uh, and the rest of your band not, you're still a Jersey rocker. So nice. if you're in a New Jersey band and you'd like to be featured on, on the show, whether you've got a cool music video for our Jersey Rock video of the week at WRAT.com, uh, or you know, if you're interested in being on the podcast or the on-air show, email me. You know, uh, We have different levels of... Uh, uh, exposure, because, you know, some bands might think that uh, they're not ready for the limelight, and maybe you're not ready for the on-air show, um, but maybe you're ready for the podcast. You know, there's not as much pressure for an online show so uh, as there is for an on-air show. So what, what I'm saying there is take the shot and uh, reach out to me. My email address is jerseyrock at wrat.com. I'll say that again, jerseyrock at wrat.com. I'll say this. It get a lot of submissions, and sometimes I miss them because there are some days where you know where the the mailbox is so ridiculously full that you emailed me uh, at midnight the night before, and I'm sitting down in front of my email at 2 p.m. The, the day of, and your email has now been buried by 30 other emails. So that being said, if I don't get back to you, don't take that as oh he thinks I suck. Take that as oh he missed my communication, and try again and reach out to me and send another email uh, or hit me up on the Facebook Messenger. Um, I try to respond to everyone, and some days it says response rate 100% uh, with a two-hour response time. I think right now it says response rate 30% because we've got a bunch of uh, <laughs> messages that I haven't gotten back to yet. Yeah, 30% for a long response time, but I'll get, I'll get to them. My point is, uh, if, if, if you don't hear from me, it's not because you aren't good, and it's not because I don't like you. It's just because... We get a lot of submissions, and I, I want to hear from you. So try again if you don't hear from me. And if, if you are in a band and I didn't get back to you, I'm sorry. Please try again, and I will keep sifting through all those emails because we get a lot. So um, that, 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 that's that. But, you know, Jersey Rock at WRAT.com. You can also physically mail in uh, your stuff uh, to the station. The info is up at WRAT.com. But, again, reach out uh, and hit me up because I look at Jersey Rock it's being an all-inclusive show. It's not just about a uh, band from the Asbury Park scene. I play bands from all over the state of New Jersey. Whether you're up far in the upper west quadrant in the forest, or if you're down in the Pine Barrens, or in Cape May, or whatever, I, I want to hear from you. Uh, so, you know, Jersey Rock, at WRAT.com, uh, get to me. Uh, Tom, that's awesome. And again, just got to say thank you for all you do for us, uh, for all the local bands, up and coming guys. If you are in a band, contact this man. He is a national treasure as far as I'm concerned and just one of the good ones, good human, uh, one of the all time greats on the radio. And Tom, just thank you for taking the time for me, everything you've done for us and uh, continued success, man. Don't forget us when you're big time, you know. I will try to live up to your word. Thank you so much, Rob. It's been an absolute pleasure being on your show. All right, man, we'll do it again. All right, take care, brother.
Oh, yeah, later.